Welcome back to the channel, everybody. How would you like to hit your driver better? I'm talking about straighter and farther than you've ever done before. It is possible and every single year we get the opportunity to help thousands of golfers reclaim some of those missing yards and it really does come down to optimizing their launch conditions. But full disclaimer, the golf club is never the silver bullet. Not only am I going to share three easy things that you can address from the technique side of the fence, but I'm also going to share the number one mistake I see a lot of club fitters make when they take their customers through the club fitting process. So if I piqued your curiosity, let's roll up our sleeves and jump in. It's been a little while since we've done a fitting recap, so for those that's relatively new to the channel, you are going to notice a little difference in how we do it. As an example, you're not going to see any live customer swings. And this is by design because when we've tried this in the past, anytime we would mic the customers up and press record, next thing you know, the customer's changing their swing and the wheels are coming off. So in an attempt to help the customer get the most out of the fitting experience, we chose not to record. And we just want to focus on the data, the process, and more importantly, how were we able to help the customer eliminate the slice and find 300 yards for the very first time. Now let's take a look at our player profile that we're going to be working with this evening. We have a 13 handicapper in his late 40s, average club head speed about 104, 105 miles an hour, so nothing to shake a stick at. And he said without question the driver is the worst part of his game. He said the only way he can keep the ball in play is he has to aim a little left almost to the point of 20 to 30 yards to the left and he's got this big bend and when he does he says it's in the middle, I'm just shorter than everybody else. So when we take a look at the tracers, we're seeing the exact same results. So that's a good thing because it would be bad or a little tougher on me if we started to see hooks all of a sudden, but we are seeing the same left to right curvature, high spin scenarios, and at best, you know, 260 was his best total, but an average of about 245, 250. So guys, you know, whenever we see that horizontal axis tilt of the golf ball get tilted a little to the right because of your delivery you are going to lose distance so we just got to get that ball to be more neutral and that just means we will have to work on the technique a little bit because with a delivery of about eight to nine degrees out to end and a face that's open almost as much I mean that's like 17 degrees of total separation there's no chance in hell that that ball is ever going to get its optimal performance. So we gotta really get to the root cause and fix a little bit of delivery as well as address that club because when I take a look at the spin numbers, there's only one explanation of why we're seeing the high spin, right? And yeah, a little bit of access tilt can affect it, but the customer is currently rocking the Titleist TSR2 11 degree model. And I know what you're thinking. A customer with this speed and 11 degree head he's definitely in the wrong lofted model. And this without question is the number one thing I see that impacts more customers than not, and that is the club fitter's decision to only focus on the golf clubs. I, I refer to this as a band-aid fix. So anytime you have a club fitter who doesn't understand the technique side of the coin and can offer some critique or maybe some tips or suggestions to neutralize your delivery to make it better, you're going to end up no different than the customer today. You know, the customer was struggling with poor angle attack and he couldn't get the ball airborne, so the fitter solved the problem. And the problem was better height. So he put him in an 11 degree driver, but that came at the detriment of optimum performance. There's no way the customer was ever going to be able to hit 290, 300 with 11 degree driver. Now we all know that all club fitters aren't created equal. So this may require a little legwork on your part, but if you do take the time to do a little research to ensure that your club fitter is equally skilled with both the technique side as well as the golf clubs, 
then you're likely going to have a greater chance of achieving those optimum numbers because we're going to eliminate those band-aid fix solutions. As an example, I know with the customer swing direction of nine degrees out to end, that's just way too much. And if we're lucky, the golf club we settle on will find about a two to three degree of improvement, but that's still not optimum. So if we're ever going to help the customer achieve those great results, we have to intervene. And generally what we will see with a lot of our customers who is struggling with the slice is by taking a look at where their shoulders is pointed at address. Are the shoulders pointed down the target line or are they actually pointed left and open to the target? So if you're also struggling with the slice and there's a pretty damn good chance that you also have an excessive out to end swing. And to clarify, anything really north of six will need to be addressed. So here's what I want you to try the next time you're on the driving range. So instead of soling the driver directly behind the golf ball, especially if you like to play that ball forward in your stance, because we all know that we want to hit up on a ball, try soling the driver about six to eight inches behind the golf ball. And here's a little trick is when you sole the club, Take the right hand off so that way you can recenter the shoulders and get those shoulders pointed on the same target line as where your toes is pointed. Then retake your grip and take your swing. This is a little tip that I picked up after watching a video on how John Rom swings his driver. And this has been a game changer for a lot of our customers. And if you try this and you're not swinging it less to the left, I'll be really surprised. The second thing we had to resolve was the customer's poor angle of attack. And we already know what happens if we ignore it. You end up in that 11 degree loft of driver sacrificing about 40 to 50 yards. So in order to fix this, here's a tip we share with our customer. I had him focus on how close his right ear was to his shoulder. And a simple explanation really comes down to this. Opposed to dipping your shoulders or tilting away from the target, if you do that, you're likely going to find yourself hitting the ground before you hit the ball because the right shoulder is now closer to the ground. So in order to prevent that, we got to change our eye line, right? Where is our eyes pointed at the target? Is it parallel to the ground or is it more pointed in the sky? So by tilting your right ear to your right shoulder for our righties and left ear to left shoulders for our lefties, can you change where the eyes is focused? And then when you swing it, this will almost guarantee that you're going to hit up on a ball. And if you never tried this, give it a shot and I bet you it works wonders. Now what's really cool about the first two tips we shared is these are really like set it and forget it technique changes doesn't really require a lot of swing thought. Now they will feel weird at first, but if you give it an honest try, I guarantee you're going to reap the benefits. Now the third and final tip we had to share with our customer was to help them square up the club face. Now the key here is, is we just need it to be less pointed to the right. I don't need it to be closed to the path. So if we know that the face is pointed nine degrees to the right and the golf club can mitigate two to three degrees of that and get us down to say five or six, then all we have to do is get it to shut down another two to three degrees, which really isn't that much. So all we need is the right swing thought. And here's where I want you to focus. And that is, where is the right hand post impact? Is it on top of the left hand post impact or is it underneath of the left hand post impact? If you find it underneath and palm is more pointed towards the sky or up at you, then I can guarantee your face is wide open. We need to get that right hand to turn over, no different than that of turning a doorknob through impact or playing ping pong through impact. We know in order to keep that little white ball on the table, you gotta put top spin on the ball. So whichever thought does the trick, apply this and I guarantee you, you're gonna start squaring that face up.
Now, those were some pretty amazing results, right? Well, truth be told, it wasn't 100% technique. Yes, all of those tips that we just shared with the customer was responsible with helping the customer achieve the net result, but the instrument that we put in the customer's hands was truly the icing on the cake. And when we take a look at the compare, we went from 149 ball speed with that 11 degree lofted driver to 157. We went from 3,300 backspin to 1,955. Not only is the ball straighter and tighter, but look at the net results. 233 carry to 274, 249 total to 301. Yes, the total is a little subjective because it's a computer-based algorithm, but that is a net 40 to 50 plus yard gain by working on the technique, not ignoring it, and finding the right solution. The driver we ended up in was a Titleist TSR3 driver with eight degrees of loft. We kept the customer's original shaft because there really wasn't anything wrong with the timing device. We just had to find a different dance partner. And if you recall from the start of the video, we did try the lower lofted TSR2 models because there is an eight degree option, but even in that head, the ball still spun and launched too high. And that was really because of how fast the customer was swinging the golf club. It just wasn't the right fit. And no sooner than when we put him in the lower spin TSR3 model, did we start to see the results we were hoping to see. Spin came down, launch was in a great ideal window. We still just needed to protect a little more against that right side miss. And this is one of the reasons why I love the TSR3 so much is because of its versatility. In order to fine tune it, all I had to do was set it up in a draw bias setting. And I achieved this by moving the weight one click heel because this allowed the customer to speed up the face a little bit. And then I put it in the C3 loft setting. So not only does this close the face a little at address, but it also gets that lie angle a little bit more upright. And that's also gonna help mitigate that right side miss. And once I applied these settings, did the customer completely eliminate the right side altogether? Now, once again, because of the driver's versatility, and if the customer were to continue to work on his technique, there's a pretty damn good chance in another couple months, he might develop an overdraw. And here, he doesn't need to shop for a brand new driver. We just gotta change the setting. So I'm gonna move that weight from one click heel to one click toe, and I'm gonna change that loss setting from C3 to C4. As you've seen in today's video, the only way we were able to achieve the results we did really came down to the fact that we wasn't afraid to address the technique side of the fence. And although I know this sentiment isn't embraced by the rest of the club fitting community, there are other club fitters out there that share the same feeling that I do. Technique is so important. And as long as we remember that the golf club should always complement the technique we're trying to execute, will we be able to put it in the right sequence? So guys, in closing, we truly hope you found value with the information we shared with you today. And should you find yourself with any questions, do me a favor, just leave them in the remarks below and I will do my very best to help you find the answers to the questions you're searching for. So until next week, don't forget to take a look at one of these videos over here because who knows, there just might be a couple golden nuggets that can continue to help you on your golfing journey. So until next time, thanks for watching.